Okay, guys and girls, just a quick video. Uh, this is me at work again, doing the same old stuff over and over again. Sometimes I do things differently. In fact, my days can be uh, like Groundhog Days, or they can be completely different. And we have, in the UK, us fitters have to do just about everything that's possible, even if we know nothing about the subject. This is where accelerated learning comes into the fore front because we have to do the job regardless so you you tend to learn uh, on your feet and think rather quickly so i know some of you guys probably think oh no and this is not land rover stuff but it is all actually relevant because it's motor vehicle skills and it's all the same it doesn't matter whether you're getting a land rover or something else like a peugeot um Things to do with testing and for repair, it's all the same. If it's got wheels, it's going to have something that is a very common um, with your Land Rover. So I hope you guys are, are not unhappy with the fact that I am not covering Defenders at this instant. You're quite welcome to smash the like button or smash the dislike button. It's up to you. I'm not really bothered. Uh, I'm not after ratings at all. I'm just uh, in for sharing information with you guys and girls. Okay, this is uh, something of interest to you, or some of you guys. I know some of you are a bit uh, allergic to uh, Euro boxes, however they are motor vehicles. Um, description is a possible crank sensor problem. The AA uh, people always say it's a crank sensor for some reason. However, uh, a fitter went and had a look at it and brought two fault codes up on it. The thing is, the, the crank sensors are like ABS sensors, and uh, you can read a signal best way to do it is with an oscilloscope and basically it gives a, either a digital signal or a, a, an analog signal except with an ABS you don't have a tooth missing whereas a crank position sensor you do. So I mean there's not a million miles apart and the testing is very very similar. I know for a fact that the fitter didn't put an oscilloscope on the, the, the crank sensor to see if it was faulty Instead, he took the easy route by just digging out the fault codes, deleted them, went for road test. He was happy with it, but it was still not working properly because deleting the codes doesn't actually uh, uh, get rid of the problem. However, I brought these uh, codes back up again, and uh, the, the B1471 also relates to EGR throttle um, or EGR uh, in general. Now, there were a lot more codes on here than the, the guy who looked at it earlier had found. And uh, this made me very curious to find out why suddenly all these extra codes had come up when they hadn't been found before. So, um, being curious, uh, instead of just looking at the codes, I thought I'd have a look at the EG, EGR to see if the ECU was talking to it or commanding it. And uh, this is the signal to, uh, it's a duty cycle signal to uh, tell the valve how wide to open. Now, we have a loan of this uh, Snap on uh, Versus at the moment. It's pretty good, actually. Um, when it's connected to the internet, you get a lot of technical information. Otherwise, it will uh, code scan. And basically, if the ECU's got issues, that will uh, bring up problems. This piece of kit is about £4,000. It has a, a, an oscilloscope here, and it's also uh, detachable, so you can have it Bluetooth uh, to the equipment, so you can actually hang it off the vehicle, go sit back in the vehicle or whatever, and, and then do some testing. However, what I'm doing here is going in, and I'm, I'm checking to see what fault codes come up on it. Again, and to be honest with you, um, this was after the vehicle had cut out and wouldn't start again. Now, what I have is a load more codes suddenly from somewhere. You know, BSI internal faults, absence of communication with engine ECU, oil uh, temperature, again, absence of communication with engine ECU. And now this is telling me um, that there is something seriously wrong here, um, or possibly seriously wrong. And I would be thinking well because the codes are varying that it would be an electrical fault of some sort and what I'm talking about here is a wiring issue rather than component issue now in the investigation with the loom I did look at that something had been taped up and I was looking for chafed wires and a damaged loom which was uh, possibly here because the engine clicked and uh, something started to work after I moved it after a little bit of investigation down here, 
there's uh, an earth um, contact for the ECU and you can see this here it's actually loose yeah this was the problem now what I'd been doing um, the loom had been moving and you can see the wiring had uh, moved so it was breaking and making contact this is why we had a lot of faults the plan generally before I found this loose wire was to uh, lift the ECU right out of the way and then cut the loom sheaf off and, and see if there was any damage in there. But luckily, after a, a little bit of time, this was repaired, the vehicle was running again and didn't cut out. This is perhaps more luck than anything to, to spot that, otherwise I would have had to gone on and uh, check the earths and the power to the ECU and the wiring, which would have mean possibly cutting the loom open. These uh, diagnostics machines, they are brilliant. They do put you in the, in the right direction if you use some sort of intuition and your, your Sherlock's home nose on. However, the, these don't go far enough as to, to help your stuff. You have to test components to make sure that you know that they're failed. It's either the components or the wiring or the signals to the components. And uh, this is where the oscilloscope comes in really handy. I probably uh, suspect that most that most of you are not going to want to buy an oscilloscope and get into diagnostics. It's not what it's about, but what I want to do is just tease you into stuff because this is not new. Um, ten years ago, LDV were um, training technicians to use oscilloscopes for uh, diagnosing certain things. I've got a good one here. I invested in it, and it's not just for work. It's also I want to uh, show some people who are interested in... Uh, in how to uh, how to use the oscilloscope and I'm, of course I'm learning myself and the possibilities are endless this is a relative compression test we did a little while back and the figures are good uh, snap on to a guided components test and that comes with all the uh, oscilloscopes whichever uh, machine it happens to be on they're not actually that good uh, they take you somewhere but you have to um, learn. Now, I found this book, uh, Automotive Oscilloscopes, by Graham Stokes. He's actually uh, a very uh, good educator. Now, the book itself will introduce into the components and the sensors and what sort of waveforms you should expect for them. Um, so if you happen to be interested, this is on Amazon and it's a very, very good book. Works at £31. Anyway, um, I've shown you this before with the TD5. For guys you probably don't know, um, there'll be a link below to show how I uh, tested and found a faulty uh, fuel pump. You can see the uh, cranking and the amperage is actually bad. Now this one is after the pump had re been replaced. You can see it's fairly even. This is measuring the uh, windings on the uh, motor. We also uh, have shown you how to do a, a relative compression test. Now these videos are on the YouTube and uh, you can learn this sort of thing. I'm not saying go out and buy one, that's not the point I'm getting at. What I'd like to say is uh, if people are interested in learning how to do stuff with oscilloscopes, because you can get them quite cheaply, then I'll, I'll do some tutorials in the future because um, the quality of uh, mechanics in the UK and, well, generally in Europe, it, we're becoming knuckle draggers and running away from this sort of technology is uh, not good. This is not the future, this is now. And uh, as the technology's got um, more advanced, we need to become more advanced ourselves. Obviously, with things like the 300 TDI engine rebuild, well, that doesn't matter so much. Axles, diffs, stuff like that. But electrical diagnostics, well, that's a different ball game altogether. And uh, I know some of you Land Rover guys have got discoveries and freelanders and the such like, and this is the sort of equipment that you possibly would be wanting to uh, look at getting to test components to make sure that you get the uh, diagnostic right straight away instead of uh, just changing parts. I know with some of you guys, you've got multimeters, and uh, to be honest with you, a multimeter in, in most cases can help you, an oscilloscope will high, help you with digital and high-speed uh, information. Um, we've done this uh, TD5 a uh, few bits and pieces before, and even using the Hawkeye Pro to get live data through the ECU to see what sort of voltages we have. However, this is uh, more concentrating on front door diagnostics is the electrical uh, connections, of course, which are the most important. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to do it now because I'm not. Um, we've got a lot of things to do. But if you're interested in not being a components um, changer 
and uh, doing electrical diagnostics, let me know in the comments below. I know I've asked before about other certain issues to do with sponsors. However, I'm, I'm just looking for people who are interested in electrical diagnostics.